I say this with all sincerity. This, to me, is one of the most consequential things I've ever had an opportunity to do in my whole career as President of the United States. It's an honor, a genuine honor, to be in this special place on this special day. Then the federal government mandated, mandated the removal of children from their families and tribes, launching what's called the Federal Indian Boarding School era. era. Over 150 years span, 150 years from the early 1800s to, 1870, to 1970, one of the most horrific chapters in American history. We should be ashamed, a chapter that most Americans don't know about. The vast majority don't even know about it. I was, I was at my hotel today. I told the, people, the hotel staff they were leaving. I said, where are you going? I told them. They said, what are you doing? I told them. They said, they're natives here. They said, I never knew that. I never knew that. Think of how many people don't know. As president, I believe it's important that we do know. You know, generations of native children stolen, taken away to places they didn't know, with people they never met, who spoke a language they had never heard. Native communities silenced. Their children's laughter and play were gone. Children would arrive at schools, their clothes taken off, their hair that they were told was sacred was chopped off, their names literally erased, replaced by a number or an English name. One survivor later recounted her days when taken away. She said, quote, my mother, standing on that sidewalk as we loaded into a green bus, I can see the image of my mom burned into my mind and my heart where she was crying. Another survivor described what it was like at the boarding school. And I quote, when I would talk in my travel language, I would get hit. I lost my tongue. They beat me every day. Children abused emotionally, physically, and sexually abused, forced into hard labor. Some put up for adoption without the consent of their birth parents. Some left for dead in unmarked graves. And for those who did return home, they were wounded in body and in spirit. Trauma and shame passed down through generations. The policy continued even after the Civil Rights Act, which got me involved in politics as a young man, even after the Civil Rights Act was passed in 1964. It continued. All told, hundreds and hundreds of federal Indian boarding schools across the country, tens of thousands of Native children entered the system. Nearly 1,000 documented Native child deaths, though the real number is likely to be much, much higher. Lost generations, culture, and language, lost trust. It's horribly, horribly wrong. It's a sin on our soul. I'd like to ask, with your permission, for a moment of silence, as you remember those lost and the generations living with that trauma. After 150 years, the United States government eventually stopped the program. But the federal government has never, never formally apologized for what happened. Until today, I formally apologize as President of the United States of America for what we did. I formally apologize. That's long overdue at the tribal school, at a tribal school in Arizona, a community full of tradition and culture, and joined by survivors and descendants to do just that. Apologize, apologize, apologize. Rewrite the history book correctly. I have a solemn responsibility to be the first president to formally apologize to the Native peoples. Native Americans, Native Hawaiians, Native Alaskans, and Federal Indian boarding schools. It's long, long, long overdue. Quite frankly, there's no excuse that this apology took 50 years to make. The Federal Indian boarding school policy, the pain it has caused, will always be a significant mark of shame, a blot on American history.